Welcome to the Chosen Devotional, day number seven, Doubt. The scripture comes from Luke chapter one, verses 11 to 15, and then 18 to 20. Let's take a look at those in my Bible. The chapter title here is The Birth of John the Baptist Foretold, and Zachariah and Elizabeth were very old in age and always wanted children, but had been barren, no children yet. And so let's jump up to verse 11. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to give him the name John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from birth. Many of the people of Israel will he bring back to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, How can this be? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. The angel answered, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their proper time. That's exciting and kind of fearful all at the same time to have an angel appear to you. So this devotion today is kind of cute. It's like a reporter. So here we have the reporter saying, Zechariah, you've been a priest for many years. It's been said you and your wife Elizabeth are righteous in the sight of God and observe his commands and decrees blamelessly. So why was it such a struggle to believe Gabriel when he announced that you would have a son? Zechariah, First of all, having an angel appear before you is utterly terrifying. Furthermore, I was in the temple on official business performing my priestly duty. The last thing I expected was a personal encounter with the archangel Gabriel. So your doubt was due to the personal nature of the message? Of course, it took me off guard. Not to mention Elizabeth and I are already old, well beyond childbearing age. Reporter, you didn't recall the story of Abraham and Sarah? or Hannah, or Rebecca, or Rachel, or other barren women with whom God miraculously intervened? What I recall was how much we had prayed for a child. For many years, Elizabeth and I petitioned God. We prayed with great faith. We hoped. We trusted. For decades, we did this. And nothing happened? And nothing happened. Then it was too late, and with heavy hearts, we accepted it was God's will. Reporter, did Gabriel's announcement feel more painful than hopeful? Hope can be painful, or so I thought. Gabriel said my prayer had been heard. He told me Elizabeth would bear a son and we are to call him John, that he would be a joy and a delight to us and would prepare the people of the Lord. It truly was incredible, a miracle. I know God is faithful, I know this, and yet I doubted. I doubted that we were chosen. What was your response? I asked Gabriel how I could be sure because, you know, we were already so old, as if God didn't know that. I know that was a ridiculous question. I imagine most people can sympathize given the circumstances. Thanks, but they shouldn't. I asked an archangel sent by God how I could be sure of what he was telling me. What was I thinking? How could I not fall on my face and praise God right then and there? I deserved what came next. Not being able to speak? Yes, because of my disastrous unbelief, I couldn't talk again till after my son was born. When I was finally able to, I immediately began praising God, what I should have done in the first place. What would you like to tell others in light of this experience? Simple, repent and believe. God chose you and he wants to use you, even if you think it's too late or impossible. Let God be God, trust him and believe. You are chosen. Oh my goodness, I just love that so much. We are chosen, each one of us, and especially maybe you're not feeling so chosen today. I know there's days when I don't feel chosen or sometimes I question, God, why did you choose me? I'm such a disaster. But there's a lot of great examples in the Bible that make us feel a little better. 
same kind of thing people doubting people questioning it's been going on for centuries so on the one hand we're in good company but also let's try to believe today that you are chosen i am chosen we are chosen and because we are chosen god has a future for us that looks different than what the world might have in mind climbing corporate ladders or whatever we're chosen to do different work remember get used to different that's a good thing right so i pray today that you feel chosen and that you're out there doing what God has chosen you to go do. Here's the prayer focus. God, we just want to thank you today and acknowledge you, Lord, that there are places in our hearts that we have hardened our hearts towards you. And I pray, Lord, we repent of all of those now. I know there's places I have, we all have. And Lord, we just want to be open with you and repent of those. And just be resolved, Lord, that we're going to surrender to you and we are just going to do anything that you ask it to do. I mean, back then you asked a very old couple to give birth to a son that was John the Baptist. Lord, there's something exciting that you want to do in my life today and everyone who's listening and praying along. And I just pray, God, that you would just help us to surrender and to be open and to remember that we are chosen and we are chosen for a special purpose. Thank you in all of this. We ask for Jesus' name. Amen. All right, moving forward. What is something you've repeatedly petitioned God for? Mm, I remember I mean, we had a hard time getting pregnant and had two miscarriages before we had our first child. So I can really kind of relate to Elizabeth. Um, I wasn't quite that old yet, but that and maybe um, getting a job. There's a lot of things that I feel like I've asked and asked. And sometimes you think, I'm a Christian. Jesus loves me. He should hear my prayer and answer, right? But sometimes he doesn't. You know, he always answers either yes or no or wait. And I've had a lot of wait answers, but a lot of times later it's worth the wait. Um, so I encourage you in that if you're in the waiting period, just keep waiting and keep praying and asking because he has chosen you and he, he does hear our prayers. Do you struggle to believe God hears your prayers? That is something, no, no longer, um, as I've gotten stronger as a Christian, I definitely believe that he hears them and he is listening and that he does want to answer our prayers. However, I also understand now that the prayer that I ask and what I think is best, you know, might not always be the best for me. So I remember, you know, wanting to go out with a guy way back when, like a long time ago, I'm very old now, but, and God wouldn't answer that prayer. And then later I find out how that person ended up. So, you know, thank God for unanswered prayers sometimes. So he knows best. I know he's listening and I've learned just to really trust in what he's going to do for me. What are some audacious things you can ask God to do in your life? I know I have already asked him for some audacious things um, and it's been fun to see him answer those mainly in the area of ministry like doing mission trips or I had um, like a Christian band and we did this really big ministry and I just believed God you know we didn't have any money or location or anything and he just provided so I just want to encourage you just pray big because God he's a big God right and so he wants us to pray and ask for things um, along with his will and he will provide and so I just hope today you remember that that he is listening to your prayers even though it may seem to take a long time that he is listening and that he has chosen you and I hope you have a great day remembering that see you tomorrow you can get your own chosen devotional mailed right to your house, season one or season two. They also have great Bible studies from season one and season two. Simply go to thechosengifts.com to find all kinds of great chosen merchandise.